Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa liya salihin. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh khatam al anbiya'i wa mursaleen. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala abdika wa rasoolika muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa man da'a bi da'watihi wa stanna bi sunnati ila yawmiddin wa sallam tasliman kathira. Amma ba'd. All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. And surely Allah is the friend and protector of the righteous. And I bear witness that Allah is one and has no partners. And that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, is his servant and his last messenger. And may Allah always and constantly send peace and blessings to Muhammad, to his family, to his companions, to all those who call to his way and establish his sunnah to the day of judgment. As to what follows, I begin with the greeting words of the righteous. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I begin by cautioning myself and you to have taqwa, that we should have the consciousness of Allah, al khawf wa raja. We should fear Allah and hope in the mercy of Allah. And I pray that Allah would bless you and me and this ummah in this very critical time that we are going through today. At this time of the year, especially on this occasion, those who follow the solar calendar are thinking about time. They think about what happened in the future, and they think about what happened in the past, and they project toward the future. For the Muslims, we are also at the beginning of a new Islamic year. And so time is of concern uh, to many uh, of the people now, and they express it in their words. They make intentions. They look toward the future. And it has always been the way of the Muslims to uh, seek refuge in the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. That especially at critical moments, and at this point in our Ummah's history, where we are feeling uh, under extreme pressure. We are feeling that we are being misunderstood and a sense of frustration with so much wealth in the Ummah, with so many young people, with intellectuals, with books uh, at our hands. The great scholars in the past would have to travel kilometers to get one hadith. And now we can put all the books of, of, of the Sahih collections and tafsir and uh, history, we put it on a chip and we put it in our pocket. So it is not about knowledge, it's not about uh, information, it's not about wealth. We have some of the richest people on the face of the planet Earth. It's not about numbers. We're 1.6 billion Muslims all over the planet. Every country that I go to, you will find masjids now filled with believers. You will find more and more people, even in the European countries, in America, accepting Islam. Numbers growing to major extent. So it's not about numbers. It is a great potential that we have. But with that potential, there is a frustration. Because with the rich people that we have, the largest buildings on earth, some of the biggest structures and airports. With that, we have some poor of the poorest people. I traveled to, to the Sahara, Al Kubra, to the great Sahara Desert, and visited Muslims who, who barely had enough to break their fast. The same Ummah, the same Kalima. And so a contradiction comes in here a contradiction wealth and poverty. With the great numbers we have and the great potential, we still feel humiliation, we feel frustration. And we want that Islam would be respected by people and would be given its place in the world. And so a feeling of frustration also comes in. The scholars, having scholars speaking many different languages, having a history of scholarship, but at the same time in many cases you find the scholars 
instead of dealing with new uh, inventions and new direction for the world, they argue with each other about minor points. And the Prophet ﷺ said in authentic hadith, مَا ضَلَّ قَوْمٍ قَطْ بَعْدَ هُدَى إِلَّا أُوتُ الْجَدَلْ That people would not go astray after guidance until they were given the ability to argue with each other. And so a contradiction is there. And so at this critical point in history, we seek refuge with Allah Azza wa Jal at a time-based period. We're thinking about time. What could Allah have said about time? What could Allah Azza wa Jal have said about the condition of Muslims today? We see in Surah Al-Hasha, Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed to us, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Ya ayyuha alladheena aamunu attaqu allaha wal tandu nafsun ma qaddamat li ghad wa attaqu allah inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amaloon wa la takunu ka alladheena nasu allaha fa ansahum anfusahum ulaika humul fasikun Allah tells us, O you who believe, have the consciousness of Allah and let every soul look to what it put forward for tomorrow and fear Allah. Surely Allah is well aware of all that you do. And be not as those who forgot Allah, and so He will make them forget themselves. Surely they are the disobedient ones. And so in this verse, this divine formula, Allah begins by cautioning us with taqwa and telling every individual, what did you put forward for tomorrow? Time. What seeds did you plant in the, in the past year which will go toward your future? What sadaqah jariyah? What moving sadaqah did you give? What knowledge were you involved in? How did you help the ummah? Plant some seeds for the future. Project yourself and fear Allah because Allah is well aware of all that you do. And then the gem of wisdom comes in the ayah, dealing with our situation. Be not as those who forgot Allah, He will make them forget themselves. And so your wealth will not come to the assistance of the poor. Your armies will not come to, to liberate the oppressed. Your scholars who waste their time arguing with each other on furua on minor issues. So the contradiction comes. Forgetting Allah, you will forget. We will forget literally the qualities we have which made us the best ummah ever raised for humanity. And so an internal change has to come about. We have to look into ourselves. We have to change the template of our Islam. We do things in a certain way culturally. We do things because he inherited from our parents. But now it is the point where our Islam needs to be relevant to the world today, on the ground, dealing with our issues because we are surrounded now. We are surrounded. We are demonized. They are accusing us of things that we have not done. They are accusing this Ummah, which was the Ummah of Islah, of repair, accusing it of being the Ummah of destruction. And so we seek refuge at this point. When we feel this pressure on us, we seek refuge in the Messenger of Allah The companions used to always seek refuge. And they said in the Battle of Hunayn, after Fatu Mecca, when the Hawazan tribe had, had, had threatened Islam and the Prophet went out to them and they were ambushed. And somebody said they had killed Muhammad They said they killed him. And the people were afraid. And the Sahaba said, Ida Hami al Watis, he said, if it got hot, we seek refuge in the Messenger of Allah. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, stood up and said, Anna Nabi la Kadab, Anna ibn Abdul Muttalib. I am the Prophet, no lie. I am one of the sons, the grandchildren of Abdul Muttalib. And so they knew his nasab his genealogy, they knew who he was. And so 
we seek refuge in Rasulullah The time of pressure, the time of difficulty. It is reported in the first years, the early years in Mecca, they were torturing believers. If you just said the Kelima and they found out about it, they would torture you to death. And they especially came to give as much problems and, and difficulties to Rasulullah as they could, torturing him and saying things, but he continued. No matter what the cost was, he continued spreading the message of La ilaha illallah. And it is reported that they would follow him around and say things against him. And they even gathered together in their nadi, in their uh, parliament or their congress, they gathered together and said, what can we do to stop this man? This was a think tank 1400 years ago. What can we do to stop this man? We cannot hurt him physically because Benu Hashim is with him and then this other power, it's stopping us. So we need to say something about him which is so negative that the people will run away. And so they went to uh, Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira. And they said, what can we say about him? Can we call him Kahin? Let us call him a wizard. But the Arabs at that time lived in Jahili, but they loved truthfulness. So Al-Walid said, no, he's not a Kahin. He does not have their formulas and their, their disguise. He's not a Kahin. So they said, okay, let's say he is Majnoon. Let's say he's crazy. But Walid said, no, he's not Majnoon because the Majnoon people have certain gurgling spasms and he, he, he's calm. He's calm. He's not Majnoon. They said, let's say he's Sha'ir. Let's say he's a poet. And Al Walid said, no, we know our poetry. This is not poetry. It's sweet, but it's not our poetry. They said, no, maybe we should say he is Sahir. Let's say he's a magician. But Al Walid said, no, because he doesn't do nafathati fil uqad. He's not blowing in knots and anything, so we cannot say he is a magician. So now they got frustrated. What should we call him? We have to make a choice. Like today, is he a terrorist? Is he fundamentalist? Islamists. New words they come up with every other month. What should we call him? Finally, they agreed, let us call him Sahir. Because his message breaks up families. Parents, children break up, husband and wife. So they agreed upon Sahir and they began to spread the message. And amongst those people who were doing this propaganda, as we would call it today, the worst, one of the worst was Al-As ibn Iwa'il al-Sahami. This man used to follow the Prophet ﷺ around and he would say terrible things. And one of the worst things he would say after the Prophet was speaking to the tribes that would come into Mecca, he would say, leave this man alone. He is abtar. He's useless. And an abtar in, in, in Arab society is a man who does not have sons. He has no male descendants. And so there is nobody to carry his genealogy. There is nobody to sing his songs and to carry his, his name, to defend his tribe. So he's useless in a paternal desert society. And this must have hurt Rasulullah He was a man. It's a terrible thing to say. Just like today when they say terrible things about us, that our religion is killing innocent people and that we believe in this destruction. This is, hurts us. Because we know that this is the religion from above seven heavens. It is the religion of Ibrahim, of Musa, of Isa, of all of the mighty messengers of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him. And so it must have hurt him and it is reported that one evening he smiled and then he revealed to his wife that the angel Jibril had come to him and revealed to him a mighty chapter. A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allah revealed, Verily, we have given you al kawthar We have given you a beautiful stream, a river in Jannah. 
Its water is, 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 its liquid is whiter than the whitest milk, sweeter than the sweetest honey, colder than ice. If you drink it once, you'll never be thirsty again. This al kautar pours into al Haud, into the watering place, the lake, on the day of resurrection, where only believers will drink from al Haud. So Allah said, Verily, we have given you al kautar so pray to your Lord and sacrifice. Surely the one who insults you, he will be cut off. This small chapter, which is 10 words, is a living miracle. Revealed to him in a time of weakness. But this chapter, although it is only 10 words, it is expanding and expanding and expanding and will continue to expand until the day of resurrection. How is this? How is it that this chapter that probably every Muslim memorizes? When we make our salat, we do kawthar and we read uh, asr and falak and nas. Everybody knows al kawthar It's the smallest chapter in the Quran. But it is expanding and expanding. How can it expand? The scholars looked into the word al kawthar al kawthar also means the abundance. It is from the, uh, uh, its form is uh, uh, mutlaq, ghayru mahduda. It is a word in Arabic that has no ends to it. It is an open word in its Arabic form. And so we translate it as an abundance. Verily, we have given you an abundance. The Prophet ﷺ was given the kalima la ilaha illallah. With this kalima, he was connected to all of the Anbiya wal Mursaleen who came from the beginning of time. He also had a direct connection with Allah Azza wa Jal, creator of the heavens and the earth. The, 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 the openness of eternity, of infinity, was brought into his presence. Inna a'taynaq al kawthar, fa salli li rabbika wanhar. Ijaba to Dawa. They answered his call. It started in small numbers and it got larger and larger. Before he died, 100,000, he told them, take it to all the rest of the humanity. And it started to spread and, and the followers got larger and larger and larger. Kathara tul Ashab until now he has people who do not speak Arabic, who are in the far reaches of the earth, but yet. They are saying, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. I recently came back from Australia, in Melbourne, Australia. One of the Aboriginal chiefs, he accepted Islam. His people are coming in in large numbers. There is now a masjid in the North Pole. You know the North Pole that's high up in the north. The Christians have the Santa Claus. Far in the north. There is a masjid in the North Pole now. In Canada. We took the masjid up and now you can make salat even in the North Pole in the highest possible place for people to make salat. Everywhere in the world this message is spreading. People who have never heard of him, they have never seen him, they don't speak his language, but yet they are accepting this religion. Inna a'ataina kal kawthar fa salli li rabbika wanhar. Verily we have given you al kawthar. We have given you an abundance. So pray to your Lord and sacrifice. His name, Muhammad, was not being used by the Arabs. Recently, they did a study of names on earth and they found that Muhammad is the most popular name on earth. No other person, Moshe or Musa, how many have that? Jesus, how many Christians call themselves Jesus? Julius Caesar, Alexander, which one do you want to be? You will not see their name repeated. The Muslims say, instead of Saleh, they say Muhammad Saleh. Instead of Abdul Karim, they say Muhammad Abdul Karim. One of my friends from the Sudan, his name was Muhammadain. That means two Muhammads. Another person, they look at his passport and it said, Muhammad, 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 on one passport. His, him, his father, and his grandfather. But how many people know Al-As ibn Wa'il al-Sahami? Who knows him? 
Even amongst educated Arabic people, say to them, do you know Al-As? Only somebody who has studied Sirah in details will know him. Nobody knows his name. Only his son, Amr ibn al-As, or his grandson, Abdullahi ibn Amr ibn al-As, that's the only way you would know his name. So his name is literally gone. Nobody calls themselves by that. But yet this man who he insulted, his name is the most widespread name on the face of the planet Earth. Inna a'tayna kal kawthar, fasalli li rabbika wanha, inna shaniyaka, huwa al-abtar. The one who insults you, he will be cut off. This is a miracle. And the abundance continues. The Prophet ﷺ sent his followers out, told them, seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. They gathered the knowledge of the ancient ones, ancient Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, Chinese, India, Babylonia. They gathered the people together, even established a, a, a special place a, a, of knowledge in Baghdad. They took the knowledge of the ancient ones, and they put it together with Tawheed and gave it a new system, took the theories and made them into practical, usable science. And so the present day mathematical system, your computers, Al Kashani had, had the base of a computer in the 15th century. Your numbers, your binary, binary numbers, your zero is an Arabic word, sifr. One, two, three, four, five. You are counting in Ab Arabic numerals. Trigonometry, calculus, algebra, which is directly from uh, Arabic jabr. Alchemia gives you alchemy or chemistry. The scientific method. al qanun fi tib the law of medicine, which was the law of medicine in most of, the, of, of these countries up until around the 17th, 18th century. You will look at all the subjects being studied in the university and you will see that in the golden age of Islam, which was supposed to be the dark ages, in the golden age of Islam, there were Muslims who took the knowledge of the world and put it in a new form. They were seeking knowledge. Why did they do this? It came from this man. This man was alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed through the angel from above seven heavens, and they took the message and revolutionize the world. You would not have progress. You would not even have planes. Ibn Firnas, he, he, he flew. They flew in, in, in uh, Al Andalus long, a long time ago. You would not have planes. You would not have your astrolabes. You would not know your directions properly. You would not have your scientific method if it was not for this man. And so his prophethood is an abundance. It's an abundance of knowledge, an abundance of blessings for humanity. Inna a'tayna kal kawthar fa salli li rabbika wanhar inna shaniyaka huwa al-abtar. Verily, we have given you al kawthar so pray to your Lord and sacrifice. Surely the one who insults you, he will be cut off. And so we find ourselves in this condition. The Prophet ﷺ smiled. He took this chapter and he continued against the odds. He continued to give the message. He continued to stand up for La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And Allah gave him victory. With his patience, Allah gave him victory. He saw the people who were against him, who tortured him. He went to a ta'if. They stoned him. He forgave them. And he lived to see the people of ta'if come into Islam in crowds. And so we are in a condition like this. And we seek refuge in Allah with the example of our, bless, our blessed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu It is a difficult time, but we need to continue to go forward no matter what are the costs. Life is short. This world is a door to the next world. The life of this world is only short. The life of the next world is eternity. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, al kayis mandana nafsa he 
He said, the intelligent person is the one who controls himself and works for what is after death. But the fool, the idiot, is the one who lets himself go and then hopes that Allah will forgive him in the end. And so this small time we spend in this dunya is an opening, it is a door that opens to eternal life. As Allah describes people in the next life, Khalidina fiha abadan. They will live there forever. And so in this time when we have the opportunity, we should be positive, positive message. Think of, of, of the greater picture. Don't get caught up on the negativities of today. Keep the greater picture. Make this religion easy within Sharia. The Prophet ﷺ used to say to his followers when he sent them out, Bashiru wa la tu nafiru. Yassiru wa la tu asiru. He would tell them, make it, uh, he would tell them, give glad tidings. Don't drive people away. Make the religion easy. Don't make it difficult. Open it up to the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this feeling to open up our, our religion to the rest of the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding that our scholars will lead the world in science and achievement. May Allah give us th this feeling of al-Fatiha, that we will give tawheed to all of the people who are gone astray. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, protect the children of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah protect the women of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah protect and strengthen the men of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah unite our ranks, clean our hearts, and give us as our last words, Kalima la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna a'taynaka al kawthar fa salli le rabbika wanhar. Inna shaniyaka hu al abtar. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.